Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara, and today we are back with another Book Talk Made Us Read It. We are diving into the Book Talk Famous Fourth Wing. If you'd like to see this in video format, head on over to Patreon and you can see our pretty faces and, of course, no commercials. If you go over to Patreon, we have a ton of after shows that you can watch. We have special Patreon only things for you over there and a lot of other like fun, exclusive content. So come on over and check us out. And don't forget, you can also find me and my two co-hosts over on the book clubs app for even more bookish chats. So please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. And if you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me almost everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here again, as always. (laughs) Yes, I'm glad you're here. Tell everyone where they can find you online. You can find me at Heart Full of Ink. Ink on Facebook or uh, at Casey underscore Heartful of Ink on Instagram or my website, heartfulofink.com. All right. So before we get started, we'd like to remind you that there are spoilers in our conversation, of course, as always with Book Chat, full spoilers. So you've been warned. So first up, stats and uh, stats and Lord. synopsis synopsis oh my gosh <laughs> that's in synopsis and then we it's will been a couple right weeks in. it has been y'all i've been gone i've been out the country i've been traveling line around town. I'm, so jealous. <laughs> I'm like it's been a while since i recorded a podcast it's always like hard after a couple of weeks off i don't know mm-hmm. what's going on we are discussing fourth wing written by rebecca yaros narrated by rebecca solar and teddy hamilton published may 2nd 2023 by entangled and recorded books the hardcover comes in at 500 pages and the unabridged audio is 20 hours and 43 minutes love rebecca solar by the way but we'll talk about that later Mm -hmm. casey would you please read the synopsis Enter the brutal and elite world of a war college for dragon writers from USA Today bestselling author Rebecca Yaros. 20-year-old Violet Cernelgi was supposed to enter the scribe quadrant, living a quiet life among books and history. Now the commanding general, also known as her toughest talon's mother, has ordered Violet to join the hundreds of candidates striving to become the elite of Navarre, dragon writers. But when you're smaller than everyone else and your body is brittle, death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond with fragile humans. They incinerate them. With fewer dragons willing to bond than cadets, most would kill Violet to better their own chances of success. The rest would just kill her for being her mother's daughter, like Zayden Riorson, the most powerful and ruthless ruthless wing leader in the writer's quadrant. She'll need every edge of her wits can give her to see the next sunrise. Yet with every day that passes, the war outside grows more deadly, the kingdom's protective wards are failing, and the death toll continues to rise. Even worse, Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible secret. Friends, enemies, lovers, everybody at Bagscaith War College has an agenda, because once you enter, there are only two ways out graduate or die all right so before we give our first impressions Mm -hmm. after we finished i do want to say i think people who you guys that have been rocking with shelf addiction for a long time will i think be surprised Mm -hmm. by my opinion on this book Mm -hmm. i think you will be very surprised and casey do you think they will be surprised about your opinion um Maybe. Maybe. I'm not going to be as nitpicky. (laughs) Okay. That might surprise them. Okay. So, first thing you thought when you finished the book, what was it? Well, obviously it was no duh. (laughs) 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 I called that one. (laughs) Like always. No surprise Uh there. Uh Um, My second thought was I thought this was supposed to have some kind of um, cliffhanger. And I was surprised that that wasn't really a cliffhanger. And then third was, oh, yeah, okay. So, no, I really like this book. When is the second one coming out? Okay. So, mine was also not surprised. I was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of saw it, but I'm happy for it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I like that, wow, um, Zayden's got his work cut out for him in the next book. And I'm like, when is the next book? (laughs) Yes. When is the next book? 
It's in November. We only have to wait two months. Oh We're my good. gosh. Because, okay, I liked it. I actually, for the first time in a very long time, mm-hmm. had what people would call a book hangover. Ooh. I literally sat, like, I finished that book and was like, hmm. And then I kind of thought about some of the questions that I had. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, I really like this. I really like that. For like an hour to myself. That's amazing. Like not even talking to anyone. Ah! I was just contemplating and loving it. And then I went back and re-listened to the final chapter one more okay. time. Okay. And yes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, y'all, so the drama is with this book. You know, it's a TikTok favorite book, talk, mm-hmm. TikTok favorite. And on YouTube, I feel like the book community is either I love this book or mm-hmm. this book is trash. What y'all talking about? Mm-hmm. I lean on the I love this book. <laughs> I do, too. I really do, too. And honestly, while I was reading it, I was like, OK, there are minor problems. But overall, like, it's really good. It's yeah. really well written. It's well developed. And I don't want to nitpick it and pull it apart. Mm-mm. No. I, I was able to turn it. my editor brain off and just enjoy Yay! it, which might surprise That's people. That's great. <laughs> like, yeah, that is surprising. Yes. But I like that. Yes. It, yeah. it was that good that I was able to turn my editor brain off and just enjoy it. So I went in with lowered expectations, though, to be I mean, yes. f- really honest. We said after- it was TikTok. Yeah famous and i was like yes. okay it's gonna be like a three star from me <laughs> right yes so i think that helps on the onset when you're not expecting it to be this good amazing thing mm-hmm. out the box you know you go in with your expectations in check and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised yes um but for me i think the first thing so i'm reading in the first scene when they get to see the dragons for the first time they're in the ring and the, mm. and the dragons are flying in and everyone's like they're in awe of these dragons i'm like oh my god i'm getting like the feels like because you know i am a game of thrones slash mm-hmm. house of dragon fan and mm-hmm. i get those feels of like when you see the dragons, the dragons the for music, the first time and it's yes. like it was so wow <laughs> I want to ride a dragon too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. I knew I was hooked after that. I'm like, wow. Her description of that mm-hmm. scene, that first scene when the dragons appeared, it was just so perfect to me. I'm like, I know this is going to be good now. I was pleasantly surprised in chapter one with her ability to introduce the entire world without it being awful or you know boring Mm -hmm. like it's the moment when she's huffing and puffing with her backpack and her sister's barking orders at her and they're seeing all the other people around crying and then she has to go across the the parapet or whatever she has like there's just so much action built in with the world building and not many authors can pull that off or even think to pull that off they think that you need to sit down with a nice tomb and have you know all of this long boring world building but there was so much action balancing the world building just in chapter one that i was like okay yeah i'm impressed with your writing style right now yes let's see where this goes Yeah, she treated us like we are smart Mm -hmm. and we can figure it out. Yes, exactly. And yes, it has every cliche and every trope in the world thrown into this book, but it's also done in such a way that it feels different. Like, you you know it's coming, but you know. It felt cozy and familiar. Yes. It's like, yes, I recognize themes. Yes, I can Mm -hmm. see influences or things that I might have seen before, but it didn't even matter. Yes. Because it was like so unique still. Yes, exactly. And Mm -hmm. I think that's what impressed me the most with this book was that Mm -hmm. even though it was so tropey and you could see everything coming from a mile away because of the tropes, it still felt unique and different and fun with the dragons. Like the dragons were amazing. Yes. Like, okay. So right before Violet crossed, you know, to Mm -hmm. get into the Academy and she gets up there and she runs into Zayden. I said, Oh, this is it. (laughs) As soon as you see him, I'm like, Oh yeah, he's hot. We're doing this. This is it. This is it right here. <laughs> <laughs> He's 
looking at her with that glare, which later we find out was attraction. And I'm like, yes, yes. I'm here for this. Right off the rip. Mm-hmm. Jump right in. I'm telling you, it has been a long time since I read a YA fantasy book mm-hmm. that has caught me that quickly. Yes. Same. Mm-hmm. It's been a few yeah. years, which is sad because yes. I like the genre. But this one, this one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. So, so good. there's so many things I want to talk about. So right, one of the it. things, it's kind of like toward the end, but I think this is a part of Violet's personality that we've seen throughout. Mm-hmm. Like, first, let me just say, I love how Zayden calls her violence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she earns that, though. She earns she, it. She earns that. Yes, I love how, like, her physical body is kind of weak, Mm -hmm. but she is strong in a lot of ways, and she is smart. She is smart as a whip. Like, I love, like, okay, before I get to the end part, like, throughout, she's thinking about, yeah, she had some help from her brother's book. Mm -hmm. She had some help from her sister, but she was smart thinking on her own she's like Mm -hmm. let me just slightly poison people before i fight them my only thing with that was why didn't any of the teachers catch on like (laughs) we know zayden caught on fairly quickly because he's smart Mm -hmm. and paying attention to her but all of the Mm -hmm. teachers would be like this weak little girl just gets lucky every two weeks that somebody's (laughs) sick or they're hallucinating Uh like Uh I feel like other people should have caught that, but it was brilliant of her to do that. Yes, because she's like, I can't physically win Mm -hmm. just off of GP. Like, I need an edge. I need something that will let me (laughs) have a one up. And she does this, like, even when she is, like, threatening people, Mm -hmm. she is, like, she is throwing big threats that she can't deliver, but no one knows it. <laughs> like, she's throwing her knives and mm-hmm. people are like, oh my gosh, like, is she for real? Is this chick for real? And she is. I love yes. it. But at the end, I feel like her personality came through in the best way because when she and Zayden finally hook up, mm-hmm. she realizes very quickly, okay, I'm in it. Mm-hmm. I'm in it. He, and at first I didn't know how I felt about her saying, he likes me. He just won't admit it. I'm like, girl. <laughs> but then, but then she knows. But then at the end, I loved how she talked to him. Like, you are wrong. You lied. You this. Mm-hmm. And she didn't give him an inch. No. All the way through the end. Yes. I love that. I love that so much too. Because yeah. she was like, I trusted you. And you betrayed that trust. You know. Yeah, and yeah. she still did what was right. Mm-hmm. You know, she still did what she felt she had to do, mm-hmm. but it's not because of him. No, nope. it's not because of his ass. Because she was a liar. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so <laughs> I love that. I'm like, I, I really like when the heroine is like strong in that way, and mm-hmm. she doesn't just let some love or sex just take over her brain and yes. get brain fog. Yes, she's not dickmatized. Mm-hmm. She's like, nope. You fucked up. You're not touching me. I don't want any part of this. Yes. And the part where when she first woke up, when she was Mm -hmm. out for a couple days, I'm like, oh, God, is she not remember? I had that (laughs) fear, too. I was like, did her, did all of her memories, like, get erased? Is she going to remember anything? And then she starts to remember. I was like, oh, thank God. Because I don't, I don't want to deal with amnesia. No, but it was like perfect. Like she had that moment of like, oh yay, that's my boyfriend. And then she's like, oh hell no, get <laughs> yeah. out. She's like, nope, get out of the room. <laughs> get out of here right now. Don't touch me. You, don't come near me. Before you die. Yes. You're about to die. <laughs> Just perfection. And even in the end, like I love that last scene between them. Mm. He is like trying to explain himself, trying to beg forgiveness essentially and basically promising he will set it right Mm -hmm. you know and it was left open and i'm like yeah so now he's got some work to do work to do in book two yeah okay to be be fair to zayden i understand why he didn't tell her like i Mm -hmm. i understand why he didn't confess everything because Mm -hmm. why would he trust her with all of these secrets because it's not just him there's a whole bunch of people he's protecting so i understand why he didn't tell her i feel like if things had been different and 
you know, they didn't show up and he would have told her eventually and it would have been okay, but that's not the way the book goes. So, yeah. but at the same time, I'm with you and I like that she's like, nope, you broke my trust. Yeah. And I agree with you too. I don't think, I don't count him. I don't, let me put it this way. I don't knock him points for not telling mm-hmm. her, but you have to deal with the repercussions of yes. your choices. Yes. So he made while, the right choices, yeah. but there are repercussions for those choices. Exactly. And I think the author balanced that perfectly. So it's like we didn't turn Zayden into the villain by any means, because mm-hmm. we know they're the good side. Mm-hmm. But we also see that she, ha- in her own right, Violet has a reason to be upset and it's valid and it's not whiny, it's not childlike, it's valid. Yes. So yeah, two things can be true, as I like to say. <laughs> And I like that. Yeah. Um, What else did I really like? Oh, okay. So before, I'm just like blurring all my Mm -hmm. stuff out. Please, blurred away. (laughs) Okay. So one thing that I questioned, and I think, and I questioned this pretty early. I feel like maybe halfway through, you know, Violet starts questioning some of the data that they're getting in their briefings. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, why didn't we know all of this? Mm Mm-hmm. Pretty early on, especially after she reconnects with her sister, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so we don't know why the Griffin people and their writers are bad. We never knew what did they do? Why is the war? And like, that is like my big hang up, like the whole book. We knew they're bad. We're good. We're fighting. Mm -hmm. But all the way up until the reveal of like this whole what happened thing. But I'm like, there's something missing. I felt the whole time there's Mm -hmm. something big missing from this puzzle because no one in this book has says the Griffin writers have killed millions. They have done this. They have done that. No one has said that. So I'm like, well, what makes them so bad? Why are they bad? Mm -hmm. And that bothered me until it was revealed. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that was her intention. Mm -hmm. At least I'm hoping like from an artistic standpoint, that was her intention to leave it so open and so vague and hopefully bother the reader to make the reader think and question the way Violet started questioning everything and the way, Mm -hmm. you know, she got her dad's note and everything fell into place. And she immediately went like, okay, yeah, you guys aren't evil. I'm going to fight with you. We're going to defeat these uh, new bad guys who are the real bad guys. And, um, yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I'm hoping it was like a very intentional thing from an artistic standpoint to get the reader to like be with Violet yeah. in that moment and question. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that her father, like, okay, so I kind of have a problem with Violet's parents. Oh, <laughs> yes. So her dad knew and he's telling her freaking fairy tale stories mm-hmm. like it's a fairy tale. Why aren't you being real with your child? Like, why aren't you? I think she was too young. Well, no. She was 17 when her dad died. I don't think she was too young. That's not too young. You're training I her to be a scribe. I was back when she was like five and seven. Mm-hmm. No, but um, her brother supposedly died when she was 15. Her dad died two years later, so she would have been mm-hmm. 17. Which yeah. means he should have been telling her. You're right. Yeah. And you're supposedly teaching her that knowledge is power. She should mm-hmm. be a scribe. She should know, you know, record history, know all the things. And you're keeping this big, huge, gigantic secret. Like, that and just was saying it's wrong. fairy tales. Yeah. No, that's yeah. beyond wrong. He should yeah. have been teaching her, like, as soon as she turned 10 or 12. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the truth. This is what we're fighting for. Or even, you know, if he thought he could wait until she was in the quadrant, the scribe quadrant, like, once his heart started failing, he should have told her the truth. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think so. Because he left her kind of really at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. And lucky for her, she's curious in nature, mm-hmm. right? She's asking questions. She's digging more on her own. You know, she's Mm -hmm. questioning things. If that character wasn't set up like that, naturally, that could have been a world of mess. Like, she could have been walking around like um, Dane's crazy self, like totally just drinking the Kool-Aid. And I mean, that's also part of the trope. Mm -hmm. The, the, 
the the trope of the nerdy girl who loves books, who's not mm-hmm. strong enough to be a warrior, but becomes one of the strongest warriors, but she's still so nerdy and like I uh, love it. I love that trope so much. <laughs> so speaking of her being nerdy, and obviously mm-hmm. we talked about her having a like a weak body, mm-hmm. like her bones break easy. She's kind of fragile. I freaking love when her dragon and Zayden come up where they were like, okay, so this is after mm-hmm. the si- she re- met with her sister and her sister yes. said to Zayden, you got to figure out a way to make her stay in that seat. Yes. Or else. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then pretty soon after that, she comes out and the dragon has a freaking har- saddle harness <laughs> on. <laughs> I will say that I thought I kind of respected her like, before that point when she kept falling off up until they were in the games and she refused to let her dragon like magically hold her in during the game and so she fell off constantly and came in last and i was like that's that that's dumb when you're in practice and trying to learn to Mm -hmm. be better yeah do whatever you gotta do to feel respected for yourself but when you're in the games and you're still falling off like no, you're just being dumb at that point. Thankfully, they still won, but like, yeah. oh my god, not that, because of that her. One, <laughs> that would annoyed of that. me. <laughs> it did. Like, why are you like going out of your way? And you know, mm-hmm. you could tell she was making strides. Right, yes. she's training, and her muscles are getting stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, she was falling less, but not enough to compete in that way. Mm-hmm. So why not take the little extra help? Like, even your dragon, he wanted is, to like, help. Dude, you're not, He's like, you're not going to embarrass my ass. Like, yes. Especially in the beginning. He's like, I'll keep you on because this is going to be embarrassing. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, let me fall in the games in front of everybody. And I was just like, fall on your own time. You know, yeah, he can not use on my his time. magic to help you win in this game. Yeah. Like, she's silly in that regard. Mm-hmm. But I, I understand why she wanted to. Yes. And, you know, now that we know like what her power is she has something that's really like uncommon and very powerful and she's powerful in that way she doesn't have to be physically powerful because mm-hmm. she has this other ability now. did you guess that she was gonna get lightning or did you think it was gonna be something guess. else i thought it was gonna be something else i didn't guess lightning. i thought she was gonna get some kind of healing thing like her brother because Liam mm. was falling right then and he was wounded and I thought she was like going to go down and heal him but then no mm-hmm. she did the opposite I kept waiting for her to like stop time on her own or something mm-hmm. I thought maybe you know because um what's her name um Adarna the little gold dragon dragon that always flies with Tarden um I thought that she was going to just somehow inherit something from her that was similar to her Mm -hmm. Um, but stronger or maybe a two first she'll get this and something else i thought she might get a combination or something that's what i was thinking too that like maybe she would get something else other than the um pausing time stuff but maybe that's gonna happen in the next book because there was that one line at the very end saying that um the golden dragon was like now double in size or something like she's so much bigger Mm -hmm. she's growing (laughs) she's growing a lot so she we found out that well, at least if I'm remembering correctly, that freezing of time was a temporary thing because mm-hmm. that she was a baby, essentially. Yeah. And she really helped her in a pinch. Um, so she didn't know how long it would last, if she could do it again. And if she did, it would damage mm-hmm. the dragon. It would hurt the dragon. So she wasn't going to use yeah. it, period. Um, but that's why I thought, well, maybe... Maybe she'll that. get something maybe, else. I think that's yeah. going to come in a later book. At least I hope that's coming in the next book when she grows out of being a baby dragon. <laughs> oh my gosh. So how in the world the weakest rider gets two dragons? And I love that scene. So she sees mm-hmm. the golden dragon. Now this was foreshadowing mm-hmm. because you know when they're walking through the the little thing and they're looking at all the dragons and the dragons are checking them out. Mm-hmm. She sees the feather tail dragon at the end. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh I know what that is. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, okay. Somehow she that's going to be her dragon, but I didn't foresee um, Ter- Terran also coming See, with I, I Adarna. Saw, uh, I, I knew he was going to show up 
just because mm-hmm. the teacher was talking about him. It was like, nobody's seen him in five years, mm-hmm. even though his mate is at the school. So he can't be apart from his mate for more than three days. So like, why has nobody seen him when he should be here? That's another. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, he's going to show up. I don't know who's going to get him. But I, I knew he was going to show up. I didn't predict her getting both of them, though. Mm-mm. They're like a package yes. deal. But that was so cute. Like that scene where she is protecting mm-hmm. Andarna mm-hmm. from those other riders. You want to be riders? Which, what the, the fuck? Bullies. Right. How can these dragon lovers even conceive of like, oh, we have to kill a dragon? Like, no. where did that even come from? Like, why would you kill a dragon? Even if it's a weak dragon, why would you kill it? Yeah. Just hope it doesn't pick anybody or go pick your own dragon and ask that dragon if, like, maybe we can Which was stupid. burn Look, it. The whole point of that exercise was to find your dragon. Mm-hmm. So I would have been out looking for my dragon, mm-hmm. not worrying about that dragon. Why would I go after a weak one when I should be finding my own most powerful dragon? Exactly. Like, why am I exactly. doing this I when I like, should be this, doing this? It was stupid. This is really, yeah, it was very stupid, but it really proved that she's also kind of stupid and will fight to protect anybody who she deems innocent. And yeah, and I guess it was like, I know the author did it by design to set up that whole situation, mm-hmm. but I kind of wish it had a little bit of something different that set that up because I'm like, what is the motivation for these guys to be out here trying to take down this innocent dragon? Like, that makes no sense. They're just evil for evil's sake and they're dumb yeah. and they view anything as anything lesser as, you know, something that needs to be gotten rid of. Mm-hmm. which they had repeatedly shown throughout all of their classes and fights when they kept trying to kill Violet. But killing a dragon is different from killing a person. Killing a person's kind mm-hmm. of okay in this college. Within bounds. Within boundaries. We can talk about that rules, too. Yeah. It's okay. Right. But like, mm-hmm. it, it's okay to kill a person. It's really mm-hmm. not okay to kill a dragon. Mm-mm. No. It never is. I feel like that should be death on sight. Like, oh, you kill yeah. the dragon, you die, which is essentially what happens. <laughs> so, that scene, though, it was like, I could see that on film, like, oh, with these yeah. two dragons. So, she's off there trying to save Andarna. And she's like, you can fly away, run away. <laughs> and Andarna's <laughs> like, no, I'm just going to sit here and watch you. Yeah, I'm chilling. And then here comes, like, Tarden, like, like Boom. creeping up and before you know it, it's ah, like he's gonna like kill everybody like oh my god he's gonna kill them Zayden's gonna kill them and he really tried not to engage he was kind of just along the side kind of watching but mm-hmm. he was going to he was but, going to he was gonna break yeah. the rules to save her which he I was. was like I feel like the dragon should step in and kill them because mm-hmm. she needs to protect her fellow dragon and mm-hmm. humans can't really punish dragons for not following the rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was interesting. And then after that, he picked her. Mm-hmm. Like, Taryn, the biggest dragon, the missing dragon, mm-hmm. the you know, the biggest, baddest in that region, basically. Not in the world, which we learn later. He is not the biggest, baddest ever. But which he's I'm like, like is that foreshadowing? Yes, yeah, definitely I'm like, is that foreshadowing for us to see another yes. one? <laughs> <laughs> but like she got him like the weakest person got the baddest mm-hmm. dragon and another and a spare and a spare <laughs> yeah. who's going to grow up to be much bigger and more powerful than uh-huh. her current two-year-old self i know i'm like oh it's so cute i love it i want to yes, can i, I want to i want to <laughs> a cute one and like the badass one mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I was kind of thinking that maybe one of the greens would come up to her because they were sniffing her um, leather guard protection thingy words. Words are hard. Um, when they were walking by the dragons and the two green ones came up and started sniffing her, I was like, I wonder if like the two green ones will pick her. But no, mm-hmm. like I knew the others were spe- more special, but I was like, it's interesting that they're they're sniffing her and talking to her. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting they were able to, like, they were the only two that, like, well, they all talk amongst each other. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe they were the two that were just de- delegated to try to sniff her yes. out. And um, it comes to find out. So she had these scales like that the baby shed or something. It was her sister's dragon, who is also yeah. a green dragon, um, was shedding scales. And her sister collected mm-hmm. them and then shrunk them down and put them in this armor. The, like this armor, chest yeah. armor to protect Violet. And it did save her life many, many times. Like I visualized it was like, you know how you could get like a vest mm-hmm. that goes over your shoulders and it has mm-hmm. the front and the back. I envisioned that it was something like that. That's how, kind of how I pictured it too. The covers, yeah. you know, everything in the middle, all the important bits. So if oh, you right. get stabbed, it's just going to slide right off. Yeah. And it saved her mm-hmm. a couple times. It it works like a dream. And I'm like, like her, like she's sleeping in it. I'd be sleeping in it too. I'm never taking oh, yeah. this thing off. I, yeah. I would probably not shower in it, but it'd be like right yeah. there next to me. Let me grab it as soon as I'm done. Yes. Yeah. Um, because that comes up later. Mm-hmm. Uh, when thank God she was sleeping in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're past our break time. So <laughs> we're going to take a quick commercial break. You guys, Uh, When we come back, we have lots more to talk about. So check out these commercials. And while you're doing that, head on over to Amazon and pick up your copy of the book review journal. If you haven't already yet, it's available right now. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, welcome back, guys. We will continue our conversation. We have lots lots to talk about still. So I wanted to talk about that scene where Violet is awakened. Ooh, yes. Yes. So after she gets her dragon, mm-hmm. so it be, she becomes a bigger target. Oh, yeah. Because there's 41 students who have survived this whole year and still don't and did not get a dragon. Mm-hmm. So. So apparently if you kill the rider, mm-hmm. sometimes the dragons will rematch. Yes. So people were hoping, well, if we kill her, someone else has a better chance at getting Tardin. Someone two chances. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus they hate exactly. her for, you know, being tiny and weak. Yeah, and being the daughter of the general. The main the general, yeah. And, and like her family name. They just hate her for a bunch of reasons. Mm-hmm. So and they're like, oh, look at her. She's small and weak. We could just take her out. But for someone so weak, they had uh, several people in there to take her out. There was seven people in there to kill her. Did you figure out who ran away before she told? Who ran away? Amber. Oh, you mean the girl? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know who it was. Did you know it was Amber? Yes. My first thought was Imogene. Just because she's been a bitch. But then I was like, no, Zayden would kill her for that. It's not her. And I was like, no, the I only other her. person who really hates her that much and has any sort of authority is Amber, the rule follower. But she was so... And that is a, a, that is a good um, way that the author did that because Amber wasn't even on the page that much to make me remember her. She, but I remembered her later. Yeah, she had that hissy fit. And because... Um, Violet, quote unquote, broke the rules on the uh, gauntlet trying to get up to the dragons. <laughs> and Amber she threw did. that hissy fit. And then later, Dane was like, Yeah, Amber laid into me for like three hours because <laughs> you broke the rules. And I was like, Who yeah. else hates her that much and has any but sort of authority? The, <laughs> the irony, Amber. the rule mm-hmm. follower broke the rules. Mm-hmm. This is against the rules to do attack someone in their sleep. Mm-hmm. And if she'd been smart and just like told them and not gone with them, nobody would have ever known because they all died instantly without a chance to, you know, say anything. So she's awakened and yes, it's like she was dreaming. Mm-hmm. She was dreaming. And then like, I think 
who was that? Was it the dragon? It was the like, dragon. Telling her to wake mm-hmm. up. Get up. <laughs> it was Karen, the dragon. Was like, yes. wake up, bitch. Wake up. <laughs> She's like, kind of, uh huh. And then she moved, like, and the guy was like right there trying to get mm-hmm. her, like. And before you know it, she's tussling. She's trying to back herself away. She's doing all the things. She's throwing and then knives and hitting them in the shoulders. Knives. Not killing them because no, she not can't killing. kill yet. Yeah, which is a shame. We could talk about that in a minute. Mm. And then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, she has a couple seconds. Like that mini baby dragon mm-hmm. froze time. Yes. So she could like escape get away. Yes. Yes. In that scene, I'm like, why are you thinking so hard? Move your yes. ass. Move your ass. No. Like, she's like, standing she's there. Taking- she's like, there's a knife in my throat. I'm going to die. And I'm like, fine. <laughs> do something. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm like, like move, like hit the door. It seemed like it took her a long time to get to the door, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And then but finally, even then, the dragon's like, like oh. she's almost to the door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when the time starts again, and Zayden's still there, and thankfully he can save her. But um, and he does. Mm-hmm. He goes in there and kills everybody instantly. Yeah. He's like, no, you're all dead. <laughs> you're dead. And then he calls his crew. They try to clean up. the. They try to do clean up duty. Yep. <laughs> and then next thing you know, she's got a permanent uh, protector by her side. Liam. A new friend. Yeah, Liam, which I really mm-hmm. like him. He was good. And um, yeah. I'm can like, we, I can't believe. Can we talk about Zayden's yeah. magic for just a second? Because. Oh, yeah, the shadow stuff. So his magic is being able to control shadows. But he seems to be able to do a lot of things with these shadows, like make ropes, make protective blankets, black out everything. Mm-hmm. Um, he almost decapitated a wyvern at the end with the rope of a shadow. And I was like, how the hell do shadows do that? <laughs> like, what? Did yeah. she just say shadows and that means it can be anything or? Yeah. And I never really hear or read anything where shadows solidify yeah, like that. They, he had them solidified multiple mm-hmm. times. And I was like, I thought shadows would just kind of like conceal you and make it so people can't see you. Not that it's like an entity thing or. Yeah. So only two of the things that he did with the shadows actually made sense Mm -hmm. to me. So the one time where he kind of like threw it up to hide Mm -hmm. him and hide Violet after she she almost had that breakdown, Mm -hmm. you know, hiding, concealing, like you said. And then the other when he's trying to like blind everyone. So he like makes the shadow where no one can Mm -hmm. see. No one can see but Violet. She can see. (laughs) So those are the ways that I anticipate a shadow to work. And like you said, the others don't really... Yeah, like how, how is a shadow some... a rope? How does a yeah. shadow protect you from flying glass? How does a shadow just it like shouldn't. go kill somebody? Does it like enter their heart and turn out the lights in their heart? I don't... What does a shadow do? I don't know. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And, and she didn't explain how it was able to do that. Maybe she will in the second I book. I hope so. Since we got one scene from his point of view, I hope we're going to get some more in future books and we can get an explanation for how his magic works. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. a shadow's not a rope. <laughs> I can't not. get past that. A shadow's not a rope. Mm-mm. It's not. No. No, absolutely not. Like you should just be able to reach in mm-hmm. there. It shouldn't stop you. Um. So yeah, I, I agree that his power is a little odd, mm-hmm. and I want them to explain. Mm-hmm. Um. But another magic that kind of I expected, but I kind of thought it was a little easy, was the telepath the telepathy. Um, oh my god, telepathy. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Thank you. I think that's what I said. I don't know. Anyway. You're fine. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, the dragons can mm-hmm. do it to the riders and they can do it with themselves, which makes mm-hmm. sense. But the minute Zayden is talking to Violet, I'm like, okay. That was just another yeah. 
I have read so many easy. paranormal books that I was like, okay, I, I can accept this just because it makes me happy. But yeah. <laughs> I liked yeah. it, but I thought it was easy oh, because yes. I'm like, I, 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 I liked it because they're cute, mm-hmm. right? Especially when they start talking back to each other. <laughs> and he's like, you can do forth. it too. Why don't you try, <laughs> right? Yeah. So the, those were fun scenes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that was kind of easy. Like, okay, so now just because all four of them is in this thing, now they can all just talk to mm-hmm. each other at will whenever they want. Mm-hmm. That's annoying. It is a little annoying. I thought it was fun. I'm used to it in paranormal books. So I was like, yep, it's the trope. We're, we're, I'm just yeah. going to roll with it. It's- I liked it. I, I did like it in the end. Honestly, I didn't have a lot of complaints at all. And the little nitpicky things that I found, it was just nitpicking, you know, being critical. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what did you think of the, the sex scene that we got? I honestly laughed. <laughs> I was like, this is so ridiculous. They're breaking the desk. They're breaking the wardrobe. They're breaking the curtain or putting the curtains on fire. Now they're on the floor. <laughs> I was like, all right. I mean, how someone so <laughs> fragile have that kind of sex? I don't know. Yeah, I was like, her spine should be broken mm-hmm. in three places. Her hip should be dislocated. Has some bruising. I guess she's a lot stronger. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> You're breaking stuff. I mean, okay, so let's keep it real. To be breaking things, you have to be like flopping around. <laughs> Like, uh-huh. you've got to use some force if you're breaking things like that. Yes. Especially strong wooden things that yeah. shouldn't be broken and should be able to take a beating and you're just, like, pulverizing it and she's not broken in several places. <laughs> no, she's just, like, putting her hand out and <laughs> able to push back (laughs) it's funny to me i'm like okay so i mean it was Mm kind of cute but i'm like i did think it was very odd i'm like y'all having this wild like cat and bone style sex (laughs) you Mm -hmm. guys are human (laughs) yeah yeah that that didn't really fit with her whole i'm so weak and fragile and Mm -hmm. break all the time Mm -hmm. storyline but Uh yeah, it was funny. I like the lightning though. Like you know, why mm-hmm. not crescendo with lightning and break out a window or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Start set some things on fire. <laughs> Which, by the way, after that first time they're together and she sets these fires, you know, the one teacher comes. He's knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> first thing in the morning i'm gonna teach you how yeah, not to set things he, you know on he, fire. and then of course he goes they go she trains with him and that whole thing she was kind of nervous like i'm mm-hmm. out here with, with him and anything could happen and the dragon's like don't worry i'll toast him if he tries anything <laughs> if, if he takes yes. one step towards you yes I'll eat and him. so she's yes. out there and he's like telling her to do the fire i mean to do the lightning on command and she's like I can't really do it. And then she like kind of rings in with uh, Zayden and it's like, hey, so yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, they start this little sexy time in their minds and suddenly, <laughs> oh, I can do it. This. <laughs> yep. It, it's emotional. Oh my gosh. Oh. Typical. Also typical, but I don't care. I liked it anyway. <laughs> yeah i know (laughs) it was fun it was just fun it was did you have anything on your list that you wanted to talk about specifically well okay so dane do we want to talk about god he's the worst he annoyed me from the start and i knew like we'd already seen the hot bad boy who wants to kill her and that's the trope so i was like i know we're gonna end up with zayden but dane was just Ugh, so annoying. And then, I mean, he was constantly touching her. And when it was revealed at the end, again, how, you know, he just has to barely touch her in order to get her memories. I was like, there were so many fucking times. So many fucking times when he touched her. Yeah. And I'm sure he touched her a lot more than what we saw because we would skip weeks and months and i was like how much or how often like is he touching her on purpose to learn everything is he like and then he acts surprised when she picks zayden over him 
even though he's been in her mind and sees everything. So he been like touching her face and doing different things. Supposedly, I guess Mm -hmm. he had to like touch her face or something. And Mm -hmm. like when Zayden brings it up to her, she's like, oh, he always touches me. Like, you know, it's all it's Mm -hmm. normal or, you know, it's just him. And I did think like you, well, was he doing that on purpose before? I know we, you know, we know he did one time and we know he almost tried another time. But all mm-hmm. the other times that he was like, oh, I just care about you. Oh, I just want to keep you safe. Uh, uh, uh. Was he doing stuff? I think he was doing it. Mm. And I mean, okay, so right after the dragons, remember right after she gets her dragons and he comes up to her and he cups her face mm-hmm. and then kisses her. I'm mm-hmm. like, was he going mm. back into that memory specifically to see what all happened? And then maybe you know, did he actually care that those three guys came after her? I don't know. So the author makes it seem like, and I I compare him, and, I, and it always goes back to Sarah J. Mass because <laughs> these dudes are similar, like they mm-hmm. are. So I think of him as like Tamlin. So Tamlin is ultra protective. I'm doing this for your own good. I'm protecting you for your own good. I'm nosy about everything. I'm in your business. And I think of him like that. And he loves her in a twisted way. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that Dane thinks he really cares for her, but Mm -hmm. it's so twisted. He doesn't even realize it's a twisted way. Like he is rationalizing the things he's doing under the Mm -hmm. guise of caring for her, which is not true. Yes. And like you mentioned that one time he tried to do it. It was in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. He was telling her that she was wrong about Amber Mm -hmm. and he just reached for her face. Like he didn't even ask. He just like reached for her face. (laughs) She's like, "Uh, do not touch me. (laughs) Get away Mm -hmm. from me. (laughs) And it was really like in that moment where it's crystal clear that he doesn't want or need her consent for anything. He's entitled. He feels like he he has access to her mind no matter what. Yeah. And yeah, he's a total asshole. He is. He is. It's pretty horrible, to be Mm -hmm. honest. And I could tell early on he was going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So, and it's true. And it took her a while to realize until Zayden kind of confronted him. It was like, stop trying. Don't talk to her like that. Don't tell her that. Are you trying to cripple her? Like, what Mm -hmm. are you doing? Like, you know, he kind of stepped in and checked him when he was trying. Don't worry. You never have to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, like, stop coddling her. What is wrong with you? He called him out a few times. Yeah. And I loved that. Yes. It's like you're de- you're more of a problem than you even he he even thinks or she even thinks. Yes. Because the yes. whole time she realizes it at the end though, but the whole time you're constantly stepping on her mm-hmm. progress, stepping on telling her telling her she's not good enough, yes. telling her that she can't do it. And yeah. Yeah. He's so and like that very first day, like when she gets down there and she finds mm-hmm. him and, you know, he's like instantly dragging her away. Like, OK, we got to get you out, out of, of here. here. You know, you're not going to survive. Da, da, da. And then it happens again. He's like, hey, but again and again and yeah, again, the scribe yeah. people will take you. You just have to do this. And she's like at that point, she's like, wait a minute. I'm not going anywhere. She's starting to feel like I belong here now. Mm-hmm. And he's still pushing. Yes, Yes. he's still pushing. I'm like, okay. (sighs) It's it's that controlling, (laughs) I know what's best for you. Which, you know, every person in her life was doing that. Her mother did that by sending her to dragon school. Her sister did that by fighting her mom on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Nobody ever stopped to ask her what she wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you know, she really came into her own and realized that, you know, this is a new home for me. It's different mm-hmm. than what I thought I wanted, but. But it's working. It's and working. I'm surviving. And yeah. I might die at any second, but. And she's fine with it. Yeah. Especially after she got her dragon, she really cares for them. And oh, absolutely. She's in the right place. <laughs> she definitely is. Yeah. And especially after that, after that last like showdown, it's proven like you are very strong you can take people out Mm -hmm. griffin's like imaginary things that you didn't think existed (laughs) you can kill them Mm -hmm. (laughs) and their riders 
I'm like, magical creatures. These are not natural creatures. They're magic. Yes. And you're taking them out. Yes. So, she's, yeah. She's strong. Yeah. And I feel like she's fully in that now. Like, there's nothing that Dane can do later when she comes across him again. She may never speak to him again unless it's, like, to shit on I think on. she will <laughs> just like, because that's awful. who she is as a person. You she'll, really like, think she'll try... give him another chance? I think she will. Ugh. Just because he's her friend and she wants to trust him. Mm-mm. I don't think so. I think she's going to find out something else about him. Something that he's done. Or she's going to find out that he's been working with her mother the whole time. Ooh. Or something. She's going to find out something and know that she can never trust him again. Yeah, I think she's going to try and forgive him one time. And then that's going to happen. And then she'll be like, you're dead to me. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like they need to meet face to face. And he'll try and warm his way back in. And she might like. Because she tries to forgive everybody. That's just who she is. She's know, the, which is the like, sweet heroine who forgives everybody. <laughs> which is a blessing and a curse mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you want to like not be the... You don't want to be a killer. You don't want to just get used to walking around killing people. But you don't want to be so soft-hearted that it's to your own detriment. Like, yes. you could have killed that dude on the field. Mm-hmm. You had a chance to kill him. And you didn't. And now he's back here strangling you to death, right? Yes. So... <laughs> yeah and that that happened a lot to her like there were yeah. several times she could have killed jack and she waited and waited and waited and almost lost liam before yeah. she finally killed him yes yes so i think hopefully in my two cents you know with my mm-hmm. two cents i hope in the next book she's a little harder but not all the way, not, like not changed, yes. but just a little bit more experienced, a little bit more wary, gross. a little bit more, yes. yeah, growth, but not completely different. Like, cause that softness about her is also what had Zayden coming around right? mm-hmm. and realizing things. So mm-hmm. we don't want her changed, but we want her gro- growth. We yes. want her to get some growth. So we'll see. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I'm glad I don't have to wait that long. I'm glad it's only November. Mm-hmm. So the ripped bodice, the all romance bookstore in LA, I saw they're going to do a midnight release party for book two. And I'm mm-hmm. like, my bank account says no. But if I can find a cheap flight to LA, I might go just to have some fun with some fellow book nerds. Okay, so first off, can I just say, I probably need a mileage run toward the end of the year for my Sky Miles program. Okay. So if I need a mileage run, I might hop on a flight for a week, like a overnight, a quick overnight. <laughs> we'll see. It's November 6th at the Rift Bodice for the midnight release party. Wow. Okay. So I just looked up Iron Flame, second book. Mm-hmm. It's longer, y'all. 640 pages. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing this. And I mean, honestly, this book is going to be so ridiculously big and heavy. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Ah! Okay. I'm I kind of so want to do it. I kind of <laughs> want to do it. I'm about to. Am I really going to go to LA overnight from the <laughs> East Coast for a release party? And I think it's on a Tuesday. Let me look. Let me look. Oh, my goodness. So you said it's the Ripped Bodice? It's a Monday night. Yeah, the Ripped Bodice. And they're calling it a release party? Midnight release party. Is the author going to be there? I don't think so. I think I just read that it was a party for book lovers. There's going to be trivia. Um, Your ticket covers getting the book. Okay, now I'm actually thinking about this. I'm (laughs) actually thinking about this. Okay, (laughs) y'all. Are you going? Are y'all going? Are you going to go? I want to know. Should we go? Yeah, tell us if you're going and if we should get on planes and go. (laughs) Yeah, this is going to be like a four-hour flight to make this happen. (laughs) Both ways. That's a commitment. That's a commitment. If we can make it a get-together, too, maybe if people want to come out and hang with us. Mm Mm-hmm. Have dinner with us or something. Ooh, that would be fun. Or drinks with us. Maybe. 
Okay. If y'all listening, you're and you're in LA, you listen to this show yes. and you want to hang if out with us. Yes. S- send a message. I'm curious. If we get any interest, it might entice me more. Yes. Because that's a flight. Or <laughs> if you know about it happening in a different state at a different bookstore. Like I know Entangled is based out of Colorado, Fort Collins, Colorado. So maybe they'll do something in Denver. Mm-hmm. And if it's like publisher. She, the author Rebecca Yaros might show up if the publisher's like hosting it. I haven't mm-hmm. heard anything. Everybody else, like, please let me know if anything is happening because have credit card will fly. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to Google. It looks like a couple different stores are doing release parties. Ooh. Midnight release party. Here's another one. Where is this one at? One's Washington State. I found. Where is this at? Greenville, what? Where's Greenville? South Carolina? Is that Greenville? I think so. There's one. Okay, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do some research. We're gonna do yes. some research because I, I feel like I want to do it. <laughs> so oh my cheesy. god! <laughs> I'm gonna do some research to see if I can find one closer, or if I get enough feedback from Shelf Addiction yes. listeners. We'll see. Yes, because that's an expense, but. I might do it. I'm crazy right now. I'm crazy like that sometimes. I get the itch and I, I just want to do I, stuff. I heard it before I finished the book and I was like, eh, whatever. And then I finished the book and I was like, you know what? I think I need to go. I mean, the only thing that could make this even better is if the author was there. I would mm-hmm. definitely do it if she was there and I can get a book signed. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm going to start researching and see if Entangled Publishing is actually going to put anything on. Like if they do something at the tattered cover. Mm -hmm. that would be awesome okay let me know what you find i will and right back at you and everybody else listening yes if you know of something happening please let us know okay oh yeah i want to talk about the narrator right fast before we um rate it and uh close out so i have read or listened to quite a few things done by rebecca solar and she is freaking amazing like Uh i loved how she did her voices the dragon's voices like she is so spectacular in this book she really wins the gold star i think for the narration for in this book i don't know i just think it's great i think she went above and beyond and it was like i knew that this other guy tim hamilton i knew his name was on there but he didn't show up until the final chapter when we get oh, i was POV. wondering yeah it, he wasn't scattered throughout he was just mm-hmm. at the end you know while he's sitting by Val, uh violet's bedside i'm like mm-hmm. oh a man's voice <laughs> I'm like oh here it is So I also really enjoyed the little bit I heard from him. And I kind of am hoping that we get some switching back and forth between their POVs in the next book. I hope so. Like after that final chapter, the amount of groveling he's going to have to do. I hope we get some from his point of view. Yeah. And now that we know his brother is reintroduced, Mm -hmm. he might need to do some stuff for him, some narrating for him. Because if she's going in the Sarah J. Mass style, like with Throne of Glass, that series, Mm -hmm. we eventually started hearing from different POVs, some of the guys. And, you know, you would need different narrators to pull that Mm -hmm. off. So I don't know. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. (laughs) And I have not been like this in a long time, y'all. It's been I a haven't while. either. I okay. To be honest, the last time I went to a midnight release party was for the seventh and final Harry Potter book. Okay, like, way back when that came <laughs> out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I would love to go to a, a release party. I haven't done that in so long, and I was like, Ooh. I think, I think I should fly somewhere to go do this. Yeah. That sounds like a good, that sounds like fun, like a good idea. I'm, I'm going to seriously contemplate it. I have to see how I can work my, my points. See how I can yes. pull. <laughs> I'm going to do some point finagling and see what I could do. Okay. I think we should go ahead and rate it. I have a feeling you're not going to be surprised by these ratings, but Probably let's not. go ahead for the hell of it anyway. <laughs> let's officially put it down in, in ink, right? Yes. So do you want to go first? Five stars. Okay. I was happy. It was good. I'm not nitpicking it too badly. Same for me. Five stars. (laughs) Five stars. That is amazing. 
I and I know I know some people are going to be like WTF she rated this five stars but I'm telling you it must have just been the perfect combination of nostalgia Mm -hmm. and -hmm. familiarity and freshness yes and it was just the perfect combination it just the stars that's exactly what it is yes and like our reader brains needed this at this moment and it was Mm -hmm. well done enough because sometimes mm-hmm. you have bits and pieces, but it's not well done or like something's just off. But no, this was well done. Yes. And it was all of the right tropes, all of the right cliches with dragons. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so good. I love yes. dragons so hard. Dragons I want a so dragon. Good. If dragons were real, I would totally join this college to try to join <laughs> I don't know if I would join this college. I'd but I'd like, can I feed the dragons? No, I want to ride a dragon. I want to be like on a harness, though. I'm not going to be holding myself in there. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have, look, I don't have the willpower like Violet to be working out like a mad woman to try to grow the muscles I need to stay on there without a saddle. (laughs) Nah, I need something. But anyway. Oh, that was fun. Yay, TikTok, book talk. You guys delivered. I know. I was so worried before. I was like, this is not going to end well. It'll just be another mediocre three star, (laughs) three star book. Yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, sometimes, sometimes book talk can pull it off. Mm -hmm. They can do it sometimes, but. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to our next one. We're going to find another one maybe in the next three to six months. We'll find something else new that's hot. We'll see how that goes. So we're not done with Book Talk. We'll be back here again sometime yep. soon. In the meantime, I guess that's it for today. What do you think, Casey? I think that's it for today. Okay, it's been a fun conversation. Hope it you guys really enjoyed been. it. Yes, I know. I enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> I can keep talking if you want to. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know I could, but you know... We're gonna we're gonna call it quits so you guys can go uh, listen to other episodes that are available on the podcast feed right now. Yes, <laughs> but you can always find us on the apps and talk yes. to us about it on the apps, and we will keep chatting with you. We can, we will. So find us. You know we're around, and uh, don't forget before you leave, like and subscribe. Share this episode with other friends that also enjoyed Fourth Wing. Don't forget, by subscribing, we'll be right back in your inbox in our next episode. So we'll see you then. Until then, take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.